Welcome back to Finnegan's Farm, welcome back to our YouTube channel and welcome back to our workshop Wednesday. My name is Paul and this is our team. Hi, I'm Sean Kyo and I'm the apprentice mechanic. Hi, I'm Mick and I'm the mechanic. Hello, I'm Marco, I love to weld. This is Bruce, this is Blake, them is two best students. Well, what's the story? I'm Kieran Ross, I'm the apprentice mechanic. Hello, I'm Carl, and I'm the one that has to make these guys look good. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the videos and comment what you want. Just put it in the comment system. We'll get back to you. So, in for repair today, we have our John Deere 8430. We also have the 7710. We have a, McCon a McConnell Verge trimmer. We also have our Mitsubishi forklift. And we have our work trailer in to do a few jobs. So, we're just going to head across to Cahill there with the Verge trimmer. So it's unusual to see Carl on this side of the camera there. Usually he's the far side there. Uh, Phil and Ross doing a bit of work, but actually he's actually doing a bit of work here this morning. We brought him the bed. Look at the same, must have fell, he must have fell. What are we doing here, Carl, anyway? Uh, well, we have all the flails here in the bird trimmer. Alex went bird trimming this morning and just a bit blunt, so we're going to sharpen them up so that he gets quickly around the fields. Yeah. He doesn't be wasting time. Yeah, well this time of year we're just going to do around the fields there so we can kind of get trimmed up and get them cleaned up. Now grass can be very hard to cut this time of year because it's still kind of green, mm. so therefore you need very sharp flails. Now, look, at it, it's not... They, they are a good job, but they're not a hedge car, but they still do a lot, a lot of, you know, they do a lot of the donkey speed work up there, the hedge and they speed up the hedge cutting as well, so we'll have the two of them out there, so, yeah. We're yeah, we've blunt ones there, we'll bring them over to Jack, Jack will sand them down, give them back, and we'll put them back in, get new bolts, and yeah, ready, ready to, go. to go with it. Okay. So Jack, what are you thinking of doing here? We, were, we said we'd sharpen the flails. Now, we were going to sharpen them on it. That was the first thing we were going to do, but then we decided we'd take them off it because we took one off it and actually we checked the bolts here. And as you can see, we have a little bit of play on our bolts here, a little bit of wear, I should say. Um, and I think we probably will put a new set of bolts into it there, any of the ones that need to be replaced, we'll put them in. So when we took the flails off, some of them were a little bit a little bit blunt, weren't they? They were, yeah. Yeah, so they had a kind of a very flat spot on them, which means uh, it would be very hard, and it's very hard to cut grass this time of year, especially around the fields there. So we said we'd give them a sharpen up. So, what's the plan? Just flatten up the back of it, and then gradually sharpen it up the front until there's no bevel on it. Yeah, okay, so you're going to try that out there. We're going to use the belt sander here. Yeah. Probably, be, it's, a, it's a little bit easier to work with. It's actually a nice kind of a... You get a nice flat surface. Yeah, you get a nice top. flat surface, only because you can lay it up again, the, the, the belt there, and, and give it a nice kind of good sharpen there. Mm -hmm. And then it's a very safe way of doing it as well. So yeah. we'll we leave you out there, all right? No bother. So now I'm just going to start gradually wearing away this part here. So we get a nice sharp blade on the end here. And as you can see there, we're slowly starting to get into the blade and a few more minutes on that, we'll have a nice sharp blade. So we have our John Deere 8430 in here. Now, every year we always, always take it in and check all the linkages in that on it because this tractor is in the 7-4 reverse, but it does a lot of work during the year and, you know, a lot of heavy work there too. So sometimes it can be hard on the pins and bushings and things like that on it. Now, we have our arms off here. We have a good bit of wear, Mark, well, haven't we? Yeah, the pins, uh, yeah. on the pins, you can see. Now, the semi-mounted plough can be quite hard it because as the plough turns over, it puts a lot of pressure on one side of the arm. Uh, we have a new arm here to, com to compare with. We're still not mad about this. I don't yeah, know, it's not a great design on the John Deere here. A lot of, lot of play left and right. Now, I know the pull is up on it, but I mean, when the plough, is, yeah, when the plough uh, spins over, all of a sudden then it puts a lot of pressure on these and to be honest we're just not mad so if anyone has any other ideas or tips there that could help us out on the arms on the on the bigger tractors there now it's off the 8000 series so they are a quite heavy heavy juicy arm on it but we ain't just that mad on this here also we brought in our stabilizers too now we can see we have a little bit of play coming in them and the pins there and we have two new ones sitting in the shelf there if we, if we, if we need them um, you see a lot of play here, even in the ball end, don't we, Marco? Oh, yeah. Every little play, oh, yeah. later makes a big play. <laughs> yeah, it makes a big difference. And we also see here from this this pin here that it's slightly, slightly bent as well. Yeah, it's all the time on this pressure. 
Yeah. Yeah. So the only other thing that we have uh, with the arms off it here, Marco has them over on the bench and we're going to weld on new crook ends onto that. Now we will bring the tractor out, we just took the arms off and we're going to just give it a complete clean down here on the back end of it and do all our, our bits of service on it. The inside shaft on it, on, on this, looks good. Uh, there's no wear on the shaft here, on the, on the draft shaft, so it looks good. So um, we've nothing to do in there. It's just to do all the external pins and bushings, um, just to replace them all. So I'm going to get cracking on that. So as you can see here, with the arms off the 430 now, they're, they're quite a big lump of an arm. A bit of, bit of, bit of weight on them, isn't it, Marco? Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ, when you need to lift. <laughs> yeah, they're very heavy. Now, we have got some crook ends onto here except that we actually got the wrong ones because these are Cat 3S yes, and we need Cat 3 but we, we can replace them anyway so it's just a matter of cutting these off and doing mm. exactly what we've done with the 7710. Uh, get a lot of play down in it with such a pressure and we have we've new balls not to want it as well so it'll be the job. Yeah, heavy. Yeah, yeah, so. See a little bit of play on that, up and down on that. So what can happen sometimes is the ball can go sideways and can come out through the side of the arm and all of a sudden then you have a big problem because you know the plough might come off so we don't want that so we don't no, no. so we're going to fix that up but new balls now the two ploughs will be done 8 4 10 will be coming in as well. and uh, it's just important to get them done on it So our mobile walk trailer is in. Now it's probably Marco's favourite piece of kit on the farm here because it's his lifeline here. If anything happens, he can ju just literally hook in with the, with the Jeep there, go off and do the job. Now we have a, an issue here with the mudguards. Now these are on it since new, so they have been known to be sat on, uh, hit. Um, we have one instance there on the far side where we've actually no mudyard because, you remember what happened there? Oh, bad driver. Bad driver. And if Mick, Mick, was, yeah, Mick, Mick was on the job there, we can't. Uh, <laughs> we can, he's not here, it, so we can yeah, say yes. So it's okay. So it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, look, they're cracked here. Now we, we have, by right, we probably should be putting steel mudgears in because sometimes what we have is the guys sit on them there when they're having their tea. Uh, but we had the plastic mudgears in stock there. So just so we said here, we just put them on it there. Oh, They'll probably be out for now, anyway. Now the work trailer, uh, as we say, it's our lifeline because it's, it's something that when we bring to the field, we can literally hook in. We mark was all, all his bits and we have it in here and we're going to do just a little bit of a tidy up and on a restock on it as well. But we have everything that would get you going. We have a vice, we have our, our gas. What else have you Marco? You have an airline. airline compressor, jenny, bolts, nuts, pins, grinders. Oh. And these all is, is bolts and, and all the bits are in it there for, for do. Now it's quite it's quite we also have uh, in here we have the two microwaves, which is very, very important mm. because when we bring them to the feed and we're working out in the feed, the lads can bring their lunch, bring a hot dinner or bring a cold dinner, I should say, and heat it up there in the microwave. Uh, also, there's always a kettle and plenty of goodies. We generally stock this out there with all the little bits of goodies there, so they're never hungry. Uh, they're never hungry, isn't that it? <laughs> they're never hungry. Um, as you can see, it's, it's actually it's a, it's a, uh, a Pramac generator. It's quite enough, actually. Not too, not too nice, and you know, I can talk across there, but you know, generally we pull a lead out and we'll have a tape and maybe we'll do a few out. So uh, we'll knock it off there now. Just single phase, that's all we have on the line. Compressor, as we say, all the grinding gear, cutting gear is all up here. Uh, in there we have our battery pack, uh, and these are all actually, which are a great job because they won't come out when, when you're, uh, I'll just do this top one. So that allows them out there, and then you can lock them in at the back, yeah. and that, lock, that locks them in. There's a lock there on the back to stop them from coming out, but if we don't, we can just take them out then. And we've roll pins and slip pins and all the bits we need. We just then have our toolbox down on the front, which is accessible through the front door. Uh, in here then we just have all our tools then. So we just kind of keep this, this separate from the, yeah. from the back, because sometimes the lads would get tools in the back and wouldn't leave them back. But in here at least we've all our tool all our tool bits there and they're all yeah. uh, all the little bits of the uh, labels on them there which is important to have now the lights are a great job too the led mm. lights in it so at night time there you can go in and we've outside yeah, lights outside. on it as well if we need to do a little bit of walk outside we can turn these or spin these wherever it is four lights there right in the back of it and two led lights in there in the 
inside on, on the trailer itself. So, yeah, look. So, Mitsubishi Fork, if you arrived in here, a little bit of an issue there. Some of the guys says there was something wrong with the steering. Did you find anything, Jack, on it? Yeah, just around on the left side here. We we're having a look at it, we found a big, big nice lump on the tyre there, as you can see when you spin it around. So, we've one of the lads coming up to fix that then. Yeah, so as you can see here, it, it does happen now. This is what make is it? It's a BKT. I think there's a bridge done on the far side there, but obviously it's not fit for purpose now. We would have got this replaced at some stage. Seems to be a little bit of a softer tyre, and yeah, big issue with that. Now, once we have that in, Axel is up. Um, we decided, well, you decided you're going to grease it all up, didn't you? Yeah, sure. Well, the forklifts on the back, they're getting used so much that we're just going to grease up all the. just up the back here. Um, You've got your kingpins the there on that to, to grease up. Yeah, and the main pivot point in there, and the automatic greaser it makes it just ten times quicker. It's, so it's these, some job. This lad is just spoiled here. Jack is on, on summer holidays here. Yep. Um, wants to do a little bit of engineering, yep. and hopefully we can give him a few little bits of pointers along the way. Are you yep. enjoying it so far? I am indeed, yeah. Yeah, so he's getting a good bit of a mix of everything, and that's what we kind of do uh, like to encourage the younger lads to come here and maybe get a summer's work into them then and see how they go so yeah you crack on with that all right last week's episode you would have seen us with the 7710 in the issue we were having there is that we couldn't turn off the four wheel drive now we thought initially it might be electric but it's not electric so we rang the lads below Mead Farm Machinery and they said more than likely the problem is in the four wheel drive in, in the output shaft there so we're after Caleb took the box down, we stripped it asunder. Now, what we found there was these steel rings. So, they're in bits there, and they actually sit on the end of this shaft, like so. And there's the other bit of it, and there was one missing. Now, it, it must have broken up there. There was a few little bits in it as well. So, what would have happened there is this shaft sits right through in here, through the housing, and because these seals broke up, these, this shaft was able to move. So in, it actually has worn a track in it. Now, I don't know how I can you see it in there, but there is a track there. You can, I can feel it there with my finger there. I can feel the track being uh, grooved into it there by the end of the shaft. So it's obviously, to get a new box like that would be an awful lot of money to, you know, to fix it up. So the lad says we can get the, the casings kind of reboard and re-sleeved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up to the machine shop we have the new uh, rings to go onto the edge, steel rings to go on the, on the shaft here and hopefully we'll be able to drill this out, hone it out a bit bigger, put in a sleeve and that should, should cure the problem. So there's I'm going to head on up now and see can I get it. I'm going to bring it up to Eagle Engineering up the road and see can he do add to it. So with all the good weather there we decided we'd bring the ice cream van down for the guys here in the workshop. Thought some of them were going to blow a head gasket here, they got that warm there when they were working. So I think Kellen Russell actually never seen an ice cream van in his life because he got two ice creams. So uh, yeah, it definitely went out a big treat there with the guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Yeah. Mmm. Yeah. Top job. How are you doing, man? The hardest working man in the power <laughs> sheet on house we have. How is it, Alex? Unreal, yeah. Unreal. Top job. How's the hobbies? Did I get the approval? Yeah, yeah. How's the shirt? I only got the little one. <laughs> <laughs> Second one. What do you reckon, Pat? Lovely, thank you very much. Lovely stuff. I don't know. We'll have to get an engineer to find it out. Are you happy out, man? Yeah. Do lovely stuff. Job. So now it's time for... Tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. So, in this week's tips and tricks, we're followed by the very knowledgeable Marco and his apprentice Jack. Now, Jack is here on a little bit of placement for the summer holidays, and Marco is just going to show him how to start welding. Now, uh, we're going to use today. We're going to use a stick welder. We have this inverter here, which is a very handy um, little welder. We use it quite a lot there on the farm. Um, you can work it probably in all kinds of conditions, in windy conditions outside, even when it's a little bit wet and things like mm. that. So we bring that with us. So it's probably the easiest thing, the stick welder. Once you master the stick welder, you'll actually move on to the MIG welder much more easy. So it's to, just to get the set up there of him actually cleaning it, uh, getting the rods and getting the correct rods with the correct uh, speed and that, and the correct angle as he, as he welds along. And dry your rods. Yeah, so keep your, always keep the rods dry. It's not yeah. it, Marco? Yeah. Keep your rods dry there, either keep them inside, and if you have, we have a few here, obviously, because we're using them all the time, but they generally would be in a warm, dry Some area. Of the things that Marco will say for, for Jack starting up, the most important thing he needs, obviously, is between all the safety gear, isn't it? Yes, yeah, for safety. Welding shield, yeah. 
make sure it's clean last year here is clean you know check your settings I so so you you have a few different masks here that if you could do yeah. floating around the place there is different settings here on that and what's the purpose of that that's obviously for different types of welding is it yeah yeah like you when you weld with stick welder is pencil how your eyes is good yeah you know as well ice you then how bright you maybe to me is nine ten it's okay bright yeah maybe for, for that the, be for nine. the yeah for the uh, young eyes young eyes and old eyes are different obviously yeah, so yeah 12 it, b for him is well good to me not very good to put. yeah okay so you need to adjust then as mark was saying you just yeah. need to adjust your mask then to suit which is fine so then after that uh, his gear then good pair of welding gloves you know yeah. things are going to be hot there they could be sharp so he needs to have that on him as well we're just going to use the stick welder here uh, this is an inverter welder very handy it's been on the farm here for i don't know donkey's years isn't it mm, 10 years 10 years and it's a great little piece because it, it's actually really light uh, walks off the generator there we have it on our walk trailer and it obviously does the jobs around here as well now comes oh, good, well good weather so it comes a very very simple be sure your, your air clamp is always good we always keep it try to keeping you and mm. honest now Michael because they do get war and they do take a little bit of abuse there as well and again a good holder there a good stick holder there as well on very simple there just no big uh, deal in putting the hand so just you walk away put the rod in there we're going to get Jack's up here um, yeah, this is your amps. And then we need to set the amps. So we can, yeah. we can set our amps here on this little dial uh, once we get it up and running. Now, they will be kind of fairly high for the 3.2s. Uh, it depends on what you're welding. What yeah, it depends. Steel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so for a little bit, maybe more penetration, maybe a little lighter rod with a little bit more power that will penetrate it. Oh. But the beauty about the stick welder is that it probably can work in you know a little bit more dirtier conditions oh uh, yeah 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 whereas the mig welder but anyway jack is is going to get cleaned up there and he's going to mark will set him up here and just do a bit of spot wet so so just going to put the rod here on the i'm just going to grab this now it doesn't really give you a shock but sometimes when mm, wet. if you're wet you would get a shock off of there so it's always important to just have the welding glove on and pour it into that Nice and tight there, actually. That's it. Now you can bend it a little bit if you want to. <coughs> and that just gives you... So you want to get the angle right. So we have our earth strap here. We can actually put it to this steel bench because of his steel. Jack has cleaned it down. Now the moment of truth here. You can grab me well and love that. <laughs> so Marco, what's the tips from then when he's kind of welding something like that? Just have it nice and secure. Obviously he's not going to move too far there. It's nice and slow and keep our angle right there. We have our settings here on the... Yeah, it's much low power, yeah. Put on 100, maybe, for starting. So which way you want to weld? This way, this uh, way? Oh, yeah. Uh, so 45 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Slowly. Yeah. Maybe a little bit closer. Yeah. So the Jack is well in the way. Mark was just giving a few tips there that he probably has to be a little bit closer with the with the rod. He's kind of lifting his hand there a bit. Yeah. So he just has to keep a nice steady spit pace out, a little bit over and back, and yet keeping a little bit of pressure down on the rod. So we lift it up here now, and we'll see how we get on. Okay, Marco, for the first time there, what do you oh, think? Okay. It's nice. Nice well there. Clean, yeah. So, if you clean off what they call the slag of it there, if clean. it's a good sign there. Yeah, if, uh, I'm going to get my glasses on here. <coughs> if this comes off. So as you can see, not too bad there for a, oh, yeah, for, for, for a first timer there. Now, he obviously, the, the rod sometimes needs to be a little bit closer there. Yeah, when it starts, it was too far. It should be closer. But it's nearly... Will we, let the, will we let the expert at it? Yeah, just 
hold like this. Let's set them. Right, so we're going to we're going to get Marco here to do a run here, and so then he can uh, you can be able to flag him then, Jack, won't you? <laughs> if he doesn't do it right, huh? You, Jack, ready? Yeah. You see, Jack, I'm not lifting rod. You just sit on the plate. And I go with you. Left, right, left, right, left, right. You know, like this, and just. So how did you get on, Jack? So as you can see, it's a little bit more of a wider well there, Marco has on it. Uh, a little bit slower pace as well. Yeah. See the way that just comes off so easy there. Now that's just basically when we're running the rod. Obviously, we'll choose at some stage when we're joining a piece of metal yeah, to another yeah. piece of metal. You, you just need to kind of incorporate and penetrate the two metals in together with the rod. So that's the basic stick welder. Still very common on a lot of farms there is the stick welder. The inverter, as we say, easy to run. Um, plug it in anywhere, very handy, bring it up even a ladder or anything like that, so it's a great job. So that's it for Jack Welland this week, obviously he needs a little more uh, experience there and he needs a good, good few bit of practice in there, but he's willing to learn and that's the difference. If any man will teach him, and that's Marco, so now hit Marco. Oh yeah, I'm gonna make man of Jack. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for this week's Workshop Wednesday, don't forget to like, subscribe to the videos there. If you have any comments there, put them in the comments list and we will get back to you there. So from everyone here at Finnegan's Farm, we'll talk to you all next Wednesday.